name. And as we call on your name, Jesus, fill this room, God. Fill this room for whatever and whoever has stepped into this place. Fill the room, God. Fill the room, God. Every broken and every hurting. Fill the room, God, as we call. Oh, my. 
Amen and amen. Can you come on and clap your hands and give God praise? Hallelujah. Can you do me a favor? Can you just go to somebody you did not come with and tell them it's good to see you in the house one more time? Come on. sermon series on running race. Have you been being blessed? Have you been blessed by the sermon series running yeah. race? If you have, can you just thank God? Just praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. God has us in a unique season where <clears throat> he is prepping us for something. Look at your neighbor and say, he's prepping me for something. 
is prepping us for something. And so uh, this month's sermon series was just in time. Uh, it's just what I needed, if I could just be personally. <clears throat> and I believe I'll run on like the old saints used to say and see what the end's going to be. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, reading from verse 7, starting at verse 7 to verse 9, says, You were running well. Who prevented you from being persuaded regarding the truth? This persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little leaven leavens the whole batch of dough. I want to come from the topic, run well to finish well. Run well to finish well. The life of a Christian is a race wherein we must run and hold on if we should want to obtain the prize. It is not enough that we profess Christianity. It is not enough that we simply go to church or say all the churchy uh, cliches and perform the certain churchy nuances that make us seem that we are believers. That's right. If we're going to be who God called us to be, we must all run our race in such a way that we are finishing the race and finishing it strong. God has been uh, speaking to us this month about running the race set before us. And even as we are at the close of this month and at the close of, of the sermon series, I believe that God was reminding us all throughout our month about how important our lives really are and how important our races are as it pertains to the purpose attached to our own races. No pressure. But, but, but can I tell you or suggest to you that someone won't even get on their mark to start their race if they don't see you running yours. We have to understand that what we are running to is much better than where we are running from. And as a matter of fact, the reason why we started running as hard as we did is so that we can never be slaves to the thing that at one point had us bound and dead to rights. So what's running isn't just about what we are running to, but what we've escaped from. Is there anyone here in LFC this afternoon that would say, Pastor, I run how I run. I love God how I love God. I serve God how I serve God. Because there once was a time when I was so stuck and I was happy being stuck until I realized that being stuck was a trap of the enemy. Come on. Jesus. That's right. My memory of being stuck drives me daily to run my race until I reach the goal. Yeah. It doesn't matter how far removed I am from my past. It doesn't matter how much I've grown. I'm always on alert because I know much like in our scripture, there's a possibility that something can come in and hinder my race. Yeah. <clears throat> the word hindrance is defined as a thing that provides resistance, delay, or obstruction. Say that when you say resistance, resistance. delay, <clears throat> or obstruction. That was five. I did everybody. Resistance. Resistance. There y'all go. Delay, Delay. Or obstruction. Or obstruction. So what this allows me to know, Pastor, is that when something comes to hinder us from running well, it starts at distraction, goes to delay, yeah. and ends up in the difficulty of running because of blockage, barrier, and barricade. And it takes us from go to gridlock. From distraction to delay to the difficulty of running. From distraction to delay to the difficulty of running. That's why it's, it's impossible for you to say, I don't know how I got here. Because at one point you were just distracted. And then that distraction became a delay. And ultimately that delay became a difficulty of you running your race. There's always a process of everything in life. And it's impossible for you to sit there and say, I don't know how I got here. You do. Huh? Because you neglected to look at the red signs as you were going. You neglected to look at the distraction. You neglected to keep your eyes focused on the goal because these things started grabbing your attention. We all know when the enemy comes in, he will be subtle. He will be subtle. He's, not gonna, he's just not going to come with the rah-rah because that's, that's too obvious. Yeah. No, he comes with slight distraction, just enough to get you to lose your focus off the goal. <laughs> then when he gets your attention, now he causes your delay. <laughs> and predicated on just how much of your attention he's got or 
just how uh, how many distractions he's placed in your path. Either way, it causes a major delay until ultimately we are so distracted and delayed that he has set up obstructions to hinder us from running well. Again, Galatians chapter five, verse seven and nine. You were running well. Who prevented you? So what God allowed me to gather from reading this scripture is that hindrance does three things. For those of you that are taking notes, I'll give you a second. Hindrance does three things. As I looked in this scripture, put my glasses on like I, like I, like I can see here. What God allowed me to gather from reading just Galatians chapter 5, verse 7 and 9. You ready? First point is, hindrance does three things. Hindrance does one. Stops the progress of my race. Hindrance stops the progress of my race. Can you repeat that? Say hindrance. hindrance. Stops, the stops, the stops the progress of my race. Of my race. <clears throat> Point number two. Hindrance stops the purpose of my run. I don't got time. I don't have time. That was a good point when I saw it. I said, oh, God, that's good. Stop the progress of my race. Stops the purpose of my run. What we have to understand is that the enemy is not, he ain't dumb. And he knows that if Cam, if we're really living out and fulfilling the purpose that God has placed for us, there's going to be some damage to his kingdom. There's going to be some damage to some plans that he set up. So the, the perfect thing for us to do is to stop. The purpose of our run is to not only get away from what we've been through, but also to get to where we're going. The enemy don't want that. So he tries to stop the purpose of a run. Stop the progress of my race. Stops the purpose of my run. Point number three, hindrance stops the placement of a better position. Stops the progress of my race. Stops the purpose of my run. And hindrance stops the placement of a better position. Paul says again in Galatians, he says, who hindered you? And being contextual and incorrect, because I'm not going to teach those side Side eye gospel, if you will. I ain't going to teach you nothing crazy, but I got to teach you what the text is. According to the scripture, Paul was talking about the Judaizers who were basically preaching a false gospel and persuading the church at Galatia to follow the law so they can be right by God, according to Galatians 2.4, which says, This man arose because some false brothers infiltrated our ranks to spy on the freedom we have in Jesus Christ in order to enslave us. Can I park here for a second? Thank you. To tell someone at LFC that some people aren't going to be happy that you've been freed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they're not going to be happy that you've been freed from the slavery and the bondage of your sin. No, no. Some people will not be happy that you are not who you used to be and that you are walking in the freedom in which Christ has made you free. Not making the space to be entangled in your sin again. To some, your freedom will never be enough to make them believe that you're free. So they try to spy on your freedom only to try and enslave you again. See, when you succumb and submit to that type of thinking that, that we had to follow the law to do extra work after the cross just to be made right with God, then what we do is we disobey the truth that we are fully forgiven and accepted by God. Paul turns to a metaphor that he often uses in the New Testament, running. Here he illustrates what has happened to the Galatian Christians? They were running well. In other words, they received the good news about Jesus with great joy. They believed that Jesus died in their place for their sins on the cross by faith. They were welcomed as children into God's family. They received the Holy Spirit. They were following Christ. But then something came and distracted them long enough for them to stop running well. He asked the question to them. To which God would have me to ask you all today. And the question revolves around one simple word. Look at your neighbor and say, who? who? He didn't say what. He said, who? Again, we know Paul was talking about someone specific. Judaizers, right? But, but the Lord wanted me to take this question and bring a little bit of perspective for LFC today. The Lord said to really open it up and not just make it about a person, but God wanted me to ask, which hazardous obstruction? Y'all don't hear me. I'm in my acronym game. My bad. I'm in my acronym bag. You ready? Which hazardous
hazardous obstruction. Somebody say who? Ooh. What harmful obstacle? Somebody say who? Which haphazard opposition? I'm like preacher. Somebody say who? Ooh. Has got you so distracted, delayed, and gridlocked that it has stopped you from running well. It is not enough to have run well in the past. Y'all don't hear me. God cares about how we are running in the present. The Galatian saints had ran well in the past. You ran well, right? But what about right now? When Paul is writing to them, they were off course. How do we know? They no longer were obeying the truth. Let us not give into the temptation to boast about our past service to the Lord and tell of our how faithful we how faithful we used to be. Let us not be deceived in the thinking that if we're faithful at one time, then surely God will accept us no matter what we do now or in the future. No, 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 no. Somebody say no, no. Yeah, if we ran well with the Lord in the past, that's cool, right? That's cool. The question is, are you still running well with the Lord now? Because if not, then our past faithfulness counts as absolutely nothing. Let me parallel part. Ooh, I'm going to take my time right here because I want to stay, stay a moment when I tell you this. It's not enough just to run well, but you must run and finish well. The Bible mm -hmm, is full of examples of people who started well, Mark, but failed to finish well. Let me give you three. Samson, his history begins before his birth. Destined to be a Nazarite. The Nazarite vow was a vow of total consecration to the Lord. The sign was long hair and no drinking of wine. He was destined to, be, to, begin, uh, to begin to deliver Israel from the oppression of the enemies, the Philistines. For this purpose, the power of the Spirit would come upon him. He ended blind, bound, and crushed to death in the rubble of the crumpled temple of the Philistine god, Dagon. He started well, but he didn't finish well. Come here, Saul. And I'm not talking about Paul, Saul. I'm talking about Saul in the Old Testament. Big and good looking. Head and shoulders above the others. Most handsome man in all of Israel. We read, and there went with him a band of men whose hearts, whose hearts God had touched. Saul had influence. Yeah. Uh, but how did he finish, Pastor? So glad you asked. With a confession of folly. Folly is just another biblical word for saying foolishness. foolishness. So when somebody is talking foolish, you can say, you're talking that folly. That's folly. That's folly. That's folly. What you're saying is folly. Don't worry, I'm going to say it, and I know y'all catch on to <laughs> That's folly. Uh -huh. Behold, he said, behold, I have played the fool. And we see his headless body hanging on the wall of Bethsheen. He did start well, but he did not finish well. Then there's this man by the name of Demas. We know little about Demas except that Paul speaks of his being a fellow laborer with him in the gospel. He was with Paul in Rome laboring for the Lord. In Paul's second letter to Timothy, he said these words, Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world. Wow. He ran well, Nikki, but he didn't finish well. What, what hindered them from finishing well? Can I tell the truth? Tell the truth. In the case of Samson, it was his ungoverned lust for women. He could conquer a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey, but couldn't conquer his passion. I'm going to leave that right there. I'm not even going to pick it back up because, nope, that ain't today ain't the day. I ain't got the strength to be picking y'all up off the floor and all that other kind of carrying on. Nope, ain't going to be me today. Sorry, catch me in two weeks. Thank you. <laughs> what hindered Saul? He was conquered by his pride and his jealousy and his refusal to submit totally to God. <laughs> Though he started with great humility, he soon became very proud. God had given him success in his battles against the enemies of Israel. And as he would return from the battle with his troops, as he would pass through the villages of Israel, the women would just come out there with their tambourines and dance, and they would sing, Saul has killed his thousands. You've got to be very careful, CTG. I ain't going to talk to the women. I'm going to talk to the men. You've got to be very careful who is celebrating you. You have to check your heart because if when they're celebrating you is the only time that you can feel a type of way, there is a problem. Saul felt like he was the man because he was walking in the city and everybody was just praising him. Until David came. And then the song changed. See, some of us can't handle leadership because we can't
can't handle when the song changes. Hey, Diamond. What's up, my dude? We can't handle when the song changes. You want to know why? Because we're so pumped up in our pride and jealousy that although we slay a thousand, somebody come and slay ten thousand, now we got to beef with them. Somebody say fickle. fickle. We very fickle in the church. Very. And we can't be comfortable in who we are because we're always looking at what somebody else is doing. And they got a and they got an issue because they're doing more than you do. But just because they're doing that don't mean they're not that you're not doing what you're supposed to do in God. Help me make it make sense, LFC. Be who you are in your lane. I said that a couple weeks ago. Be who you are in your lane. Stop worrying about what other people are doing in their lane. Because who's to say that they're doing it for God? Thank you. Who's to say? She said, Pastor, yeah, I know, I got you. <laughs> Who is to say that they're doing it for the glory of God? They could be doing it for the glory of themselves. And you sitting there not living your best life in God because you're comparing yourself to somebody that even you being used by God. <laughs> Saul was jealous and prideful. Yeah. This was all well into the battle with the Philistines when David killed Goliath. And Saul came back with the conquering troops. They had added an extra line in that song. Saul killed his thousands. David, his ten thousands. And Saul could not take that. And foolishly, he sought to kill David. <laughs> That's what pride and jealousy does. It has you killing the very person that needs to help you out. Pride and jealousy. We see it now. You see it on your job. and You can see it in the church. We can see it wherever you want to look at Pride and jealousy will have you killing off the very person that's going to bless you in your next level. You have to be comfortable that when the song changes, you're still active in what you're doing. You have to be comfortable because if not, you'll be like Saul. What hindered Demas? Simple. He loved the world. Simple. He loved the present world. We're told by John, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. For he that has love for the world in his heart has not the love of the Father. Here's another one I'm giving you free. Somebody say, it's free. It's free. Yeah, Judas Iscariot ran well. At one time, but who, what did he do? He betrayed Jesus. It doesn't matter how you start. It matters how you finish. And what some of us don't understand is, thank you, baby. And what some of us don't understand is, is that did Judas, uh, did Judas really end up how he started? No, he ended up Hung. He ended up a disgrace simply because he simply betrayed God. And I'm not trying to make, I'm not trying to scare nobody because that's what he's doing with us back in the day. And I'm not trying to scare you, but I will tell you this. You better think twice if you're thinking about betraying God. Think, think twice. Think long and hard. Because it's not going to affect God that you turn from him. It ain't, it ain't gonna matter nothing. I ain't gonna say it don't matter nothing. But it's not gonna affect God if you turn from him. He's still gonna be God. I can't say that about your life. I don't know what's gonna happen with you. Hmm? So it's a sobering truth perspective to the people's lives right now. Judas ran well, he started good. Somewhere along the line, he allowed the enemy to seep into his life. And you see how that ended. The church at Ephesus had, had once flourished in good works as part of its faithful service to the Lord. There, was, there came a time, though, when God rebuked it for leaving its first love and called on the saints there to remember from where they had fallen, to repent, and to return from their works, former works. We must not rest on past accomplishments but keep our eye on the goal and strive to run well and finish well today and every day. Somebody say finish well. finish well. In our race, sometimes there are people or things that hinder us. That is precisely what happened in Galatia in the first century. Notice the question, who hindered you? We know again that in their case, it was the Judaizers. What about today? Do you know someone in the church? Or in your life, in your family, who at one time was so faithful, but now is not running well? Most of us know of such people who fit in the category of, you did run well, but no longer are doing so. Who 
or what in our present time hinders the children of God from obeying the truth? Who or what in our present age hinders us from following the Lord with all our hearts and souls and beings? You, you and I must be two things. You ready? Here's the most, the most, the most points. You ready? You and I must be two things. Somebody say smart enough to recognize. All right. Strong enough to deal with. I'm going to get it. Say, say smart enough to recognize. Strong enough to deal with. Now, this time, I need y'all to get y'all big, big boy and girl bro voices. Like, I really want y'all to go ahead and say it, say it out. I'm looking at Deontay, but I'm not, I'm not, because they saying that. Y'all over here. All right? Say, smart enough to recognize. Smart enough to recognize. See, see what happens? And strong enough to deal with. Strong enough to deal with. What am I talking about? You got to be smart enough to recognize those people or things in your lives that, are make, that might be working to hinder you from walking faithfully with the Lord. You have to be smart enough. To recognize. Sometimes we play so close with people that we don't realize that the people that we're playing close with are the same people that are hindering us from walking close to God. Yeah. That part. And so, and so what we think is a cool connection is just really, uh, it's really us uh, 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 being even more hindered in our life because we feel like the people that are connected to us are really connected to God when all they're doing is disconnecting us from God. I gotta remember, Nikki. Okay. So, <laughs> we feel like the people that are connected to us are connected to God when all the while all they're doing is disconnecting us from God. See how I did the dance and everything? Yeah. Cool. You gotta be smart enough to recognize that. Then you have to be strong enough, and this is where it really gets tough. You gotta be strong enough to deal with those hindering things and people. Some of us know that there are people in our lives that are disconnecting us from God, but we're not strong enough to disconnect. <laughs> we know, we know for a fact, every time I get around them, it's a ratchet spirit that just jump on me. Can I talk my talk? Thank you, Spencer, because they looking at me crazy like, y'all don't get ratchet, but let's be real. It's a, it's a ghetto miss that just come on me. Every time I get around these folk, and I just want to act up. <laughs> Y'all be real. Y'all like, let's, let's talk. You know, because ain't, ain't nothing fake about me. I'm going to say what I got to say. This is what God told me to say. Go ahead, son. Go ahead. Yeah, y'all know it. There's a certain kind of vibe that comes with certain people that when you get around them, that's them the only people you act like that with. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> My wife says, go back. She says, Every time you get around your family, you start talking like you from up north. You start doing this. It's because, you know, it is a, it is a familiar, uh, you know, not a familiar spirit, but it's a familiar feeling. Yeah. And, and sometimes what happens is, is that when, when, when we're not disconnected from those familiar feelings, it don't even have to be that person. It can just be something that feels like that and automatically, there we go. You have to be strong enough to let go of those hindering things and or people. Thank you. There's a reward we receive from not just running well, but finishing well. Our souls are at stake. We must not allow anything or anyone to pull us away from our first love. Here's another point that I want you to, I want to park at for two seconds. I'm going to be quick. Eat. Watch this. God doesn't hinder us from running well. And I know that that seems very self-explanatory, Jay. But at the end of the day, some people are actually just say, see, God, God had me go through this. No, he didn't. Yo, so and such did. Yo, horrible decision making got you in the situation you in. All right. Your poor choice of friendships got you in the situation that you in right now. Don't put, don't put it on my God. You scoundrel. <laughs> Don't you dare put it on my God, lying on my God. Like God You're took your hand and brought you to the foolishness and told you, stay there. Well, oh, y'all don't want to talk to me, but I'm talking today. I'm in my bag and I'm talking. Huh? Huh? Uh, uh, the nerve of you. Huh? Yeah. And you feel, the nerve of you to sit there and think, hey, now, the nerve of you to sit there and think that God did that to you. No, no, no. And I'm going where? Off of the text. Galatians 5 and 8. This persuasion did not come from him. 
Who calls you? Ooh. That means you can't. You gotta stop blaming God for your stuff. Stop blaming him. Stop, stop that. Because he ain't nowhere near it. The persuasion that's trying to get you off the course ain't got nothing to do with the God who is calling you closer to him. <laughs> Paul tells us in Galatians 5 8, this persuasion did not come from him who calls you. If you're off somewhere, guess what? That's not from the Lord. If you find yourself off the path and no longer running in the way you should, you need to know that you didn't get to where you are because of the Lord. Because, according to scripture, the Lord never leads us into paths of unrighteousness. He leads us into paths of righteousness. And he does it how? For his name's sake. God is not going to mess up his great name for your tail. Sorry. He's not going to do it. He's not going to mess up his holiness. Y'all hear me? He's not going to mess up his holiness just for you to have a good time in your flesh. I'm glad it's not glass. All right. <laughs> but God is not, he's not going to bring you, he, he's not going to put his name on, a, his righteousness is on the line. <laughs> his holiness is on the line. And he's not going to do that just so that you can have a good time. And I know, I know, Pastor, you have like, a, listen to me, I'm only talking from a place of experience. I can't talk to you from nowhere I ain't been at. I've been there. In the good time, knowing I was out of the will of God. Yep. And, and, and then had a mindset expecting him to save me anyway. Y'all don't hear me. That's right. Y'all don't hear me. Which y'all praise yourself. Y'all don't hear me. In the middle of the good stuff, real good stuff. In the middle of the great stuff. It feels great to my flesh. And sitting there thinking that God with my dumb self is going to pick me up out and do this. Oh, moment. Y'all are crazy. Y'all are bugging. Can I talk to y'all? Y'all are bugging. Yeah, y'all bugging. If you think that God is cool, he's not cool with that. He leads us in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I got to go. Okay. Hindrances can have far-reaching effects. There's an urgency to recognize we're off the path sooner than later. Paul explains it in Galatians chapter 5, verse 9. A little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. Yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of sin, just a little bit of this, just a little bit of that can lead to further a little bit of this, a little bit of that. I just, I just, want, to get, I just, want, to, I just want to take a little taste. Ain't going, yeah, all right. I just want, let me just dip it in there. Okay. You ain't, look, you do me a favor, look at your neighbor, say neighbor, you're not that strong for a little taste. Oh, y'all looking crazy. Look at somebody else across the room and say, neighbor, you're not that strong for a little taste. I need God 24-7, 365, twice on Sunday, twice on Saturday. I ain't dumb to know that if I put my foot in just a little bit, my whole body gonna follow. A little bit. Thank you. She got me to preach today. Right. A little bit. You, you can't. It's impossible for you to get just to, you know, you got to stay away from it. Hindrances have far-reaching effects. Uh-huh. A little leaven leavens the whole lump of dough. It's just, a little, it's just a little issue. That one time that messes everything up moving forward. And now every time you smell a smell, you think of them. Y'all don't talk to me, but that's all right. I'll talk to myself. I'll preach. Every time you hear a song, it triggers you. And now you feel like you got to pick up your phone and text somebody around. <laughs> y'all going to talk to me or y'all going to leave me out here looking crazy in front of these people online? I'm talking my talk. Every time you add more to it, it only makes it harder to get up out of it. It is the little, it is the little leaven. That all, over time leavens the whole entire dough. And then you try to figure out why you don't feel God like you normally do. And then you try to figure out why God can't mold me. How I used, I, there used to be a time at 5 o'clock, I used to have a regiment. And here I go, boom, 5 o'clock. I hear his voice. You got that little bit. 7.30. 9.30. 9.30 at night. 
Monday, Wednesday, January, August, 2023, 2027. Can I, can I make it plain to you? And it all happened because of a little bit. Because of this. All it did was take you just a smidge of this. And now it got you way off course. So what do you do if you find yourself in a position, I'm almost done, in which Paul described you ran well, who hindered you? How do I finish well, pastor? So glad you asked. You ready? Point number one, the very first step to, is to stop, take stock of what's happening and cry out to the Lord in confession and repentance. That's the first thing to do. Stop, take stock of what's happening and cry out to God. Stop. Take inventory of what's going on around you and cry out to the Lord in confession and repentance. That's point number one. Getting back in the race is far easier than it was getting out of the race. The very first step is to stop, take stock of what's happening, cry out to the Lord in confession and repentance. I'll give you all the scriptures later. Me and team, I'm sorry. Point number two. Recognize that turning away from sin or from wrong thinking or from any kind of defiling influence is crucial if you want to get back in the race. It's not enough to just stop and cry out. you got to do a turn. There has to be some action after you've been sat here and cried your eyes out. Yeah, okay, good. I'm glad you cried your eyes out and you're repentant. Now turn. Am I talking? Am I talking Swahili? They look at it like it. Okay. It's good. you got to turn. Pastor, you have, I have, listen, I'm dizzy as many times I have a turn. Y'all don't hear me. Y'all don't hear me. I'm dizzy as many times I have a turn. And listen, don't let nobody tell you, well, I, man, you know, no, they had a turn too. Because when what you want and what God wants is in the front of your face, you're going to go with God all the time. And although that turn may be difficult, you turning like this <laughs> and your body's going this way but your head's still looking back at some point yeah. the body is going it's going to react it's, your head's going to reactively look forward because right. looking back hurts oh she just dropped a bar y'all because Lauren said cause, can you let me never say neighbor listen to Lauren <laughs> looking back hurts <laughs> it's not normal to look back God didn't create you to look back. He created you to look forward. Hmm. Recognize that turning away from sin, uh, from wrong thinking, from all the, all, you know, the people that hinder you, etc., uh, is crucial if you want to get back in the race. Point, in, uh, yeah. Point number three, come up with a plan for handling your hindrances. Come up with a plan. <laughs> oh, Jesus, I love your word, God. Consider those things that may be hindering you from obedience, from running well, and then come up with a plan to circumvent their power. <laughs> mm, yeah, let me talk about it. Let's see. Some of y'all are so strong till y'all see them. Some of y'all are so strong till you hear their name. Let me talk to the bad because they look good. They, they scare me. Some of y'all are so in God until you see that person and they take you all out of the spirit of God. Because you are allowing them to live rent free in your mind and in your body. Oh, y'all don't want to talk to me. Y'all don't want to talk to me. I can't talk to y'all from a place I ain't never been at. I know. And I'm not trying to hurt nobody. Trust me. I'm not trying to get in y'all business. I don't want to know. But what I do know is, if we're going to be real, it's impossible for you to turn away and do what God called you to do with all they're still in your mind. They're still in your process of your life. You have to learn how to disconnect totally from them. You got to come up with a plan for handling hindrances. Best thing that Abba could do was do DND. Huh? And or block. For all your Andrews. Y'all block is Andrew? Never mind. Okay. Block. Silent. Y'all don't hear me? Silence. Silence. Okay. 
That was a Martin Murphy, don't worry about it. Don't, don't. But there are things in place for you to circumvent that power. Here it is, if you wanted to. The problem is, is that you want to be away but still have that access to them. Because if this don't work over here, if this don't work over here, when I'm over here, you know, getting myself together, if this don't work over here, I already know where I can get right to them. I got instant access to them. And all you're doing is digging yourself a deeper grave to die in. I'm preaching this word today, y'all. I'm sorry. It's, 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 it's really on today. I don't know why. I don't know how. But it got to be for somebody today and somebody about some mind because I don't know if you carry it on like this, but boy, he talking and I'm speaking. Learn how to plan for handling hindrances. Don't go to that mall. Don't go to that restaurant. Don't go by their house. Don't pick up that phone call. Don't look at their social media. Unblock them. Delete them from your phone. When they call on your phone, put the thing and say, if you answer this, God gonna hate you. Do whatever you gotta do. Do whatever you got to do to be right with God. Do what you got to do to be right with God. We are, and this is what I love about our generation, we are so creative. And yet when it comes to simple things, we try to figure out, oh, how I do that? Plan, plan, get a plan to handle my hindrances. Oh my God, what am I going to do? You know what to do because you're creative. He's instilling in you to be creative. You choose not to. You want to be tied up. Oh, she give me the eyes. Keep moving. Let me go. <laughs> Come up with a plan for handling the images. Point four. And I'm going to get up out of here. Key to running well and finishing well. I've said it before. And it's worth noting again. You have to fix your eyes on the goal. You got to look to Jesus. The author of Hebrews says, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Charles Simeon said this. I was going to do all this hooping, and no, I ain't going to do it. The Lord said, don't you do it. Charles Simeon said, shall I not run with all my might now that I see the end in view? Shall I not run with all my might now that I see the end in view? Can you do me a favor? And I'm done. Say, neighbor, run well and finish well. Regardless of the obstacles, run well and finish well. Regardless to what's been said, run well and finish well. Regardless to who, who thinks you won't finish, run well and finish well. Regardless to how long the race may be, help me out. Regardless of those things in the past, regardless of every distraction, delay, and barricade in your life, you got to run well and finish well. This race is not based on the runner. Rather, it's based on the will of the runner to finish. Run the race to finish the race. Looking to Jesus who's the author and the finisher of our faith. Don't be moved by others bowing out of the race. Don't be moved by the change in course. Somebody say run. Run like your life depended on it. Somebody say run. run. Like your soul salvation is dependent on it. Run. run. Don't look back. Don't look to the side. Stay looking ahead. Keep running. Keep pressing toward the mark. Don't stop until you hear the judge at the end of the race tell you, well done, my good and faithful servant. You got to run until you hear you are faithful over the few. Run until you get the crown of life. Somebody say run well. Run well. To finish well. Father, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Father, for this word that you have preached on the name. Thank you, Father, for being our helper, for being our cheerleader, even in the stands as we're running this race of life. We thank you, Father, because we know that there's a greater cloud of witnesses that are cheering us on, people that have run this race and finished their race well. Father, God, we thank you, Lord. Father, I pray and I ask in Jesus' name that you would touch each and every person here, God, under the sound of my voice, those that are watching online, for those that... Uh, are running the race and are getting weary in their well-doing, God. I pray, God, that you would give them strength now to finish the race, God, and finish it well. Father, we thank you, Lord, because you're with us at all points of our life. You're with us, taking us through, bringing us over. 
And Father, we thank you for your help. We thank you for your guidance. And we thank you, Father, for just being with us all throughout the way. God, we thank you. We pray and ask God as we go forward in our service, Lord, that you would just be glorified in our lives at all, Paul, at all, at all places and all costs. Father, we pray that you would help us to run the race and not just run it, God, but to finish as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, can we give God praise? Amen. We're here not saved, want to be saved. Uh, we're here, want to dedicate your life back to God. We're here watching online. We want to join LFC. Uh, now is a great opportunity to do so. Um, you know, I can't tell you how important it is to really like be saved and love God and love and love the Lord God. So I want I want you to I want you to understand this. That God is not concerned about the things that you did yesterday, last month, last week, last year. He's concerned about now. He's concerned about today. And it's important for you to really receive him in your heart. Why? Because at the end of the day, you're going to need help in your life. If I were to pass this mic around to people here at LSC, they'll tell you there were a lot of times in their life that if it wasn't for God on their side, they would have left. They would have not been here. They wouldn't have been able to keep going forward. They wouldn't have been able to run their race. But we have the advantage because we serve an awesome God. So if you're here, uh, if you're here, you're watching online and you want to see Christ as your Savior. If you're here and you want to see Christ as your Savior, I want to ask you to come here, come to the altar. If not, those that are watching online, I want you to repeat after me and everybody here at LSC will be repeating after you as well. Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I've sinned. I've I confess with my mouth. That Jesus, Jesus you're my, my Lord and Savior. And I believe in my heart, in my heart that, God, that God, you raised Jesus, raised Jesus from, the grave. from the grave. Now, Lord, now, Lord come, into my life come into my life for the rest of my life. Of my life. I'm, yours. I'm yours. Thank you, Lord, Thank you. for saving me. Saving. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. amen. If that's you and you said that prayer, won't you give us up in the chat? Let me give God praise. Amen. If that's you, and you send that, you send us up in the chat, we'll get in touch with you as soon as possible. Is anybody here that wants to join the LFC? Uh, say something. Okay. Someone wants to join the LFC, uh, dedicate, rededicate their life back to Christ, I'm giving you the opportunity to forward yours now. Amen. You may be watching online. Again, hit us up in the chat. We'll be, make sure to get somebody uh, to get in touch with you as soon as possible. Amen. All right. All right. Come on. Let's get back to
Father, I pray and I ask in Jesus' name. Every hurdle, every obstacle, everything in his way that will try to hinder his race and hinder his life with you, I come against it now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you would send a type of bulldozer to remove every obstacle out of his way, God. We thank you for a fresh start. We thank you for a fresh move. We thank you that you're ordering his steps. We thank you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Come on, let me give God praise and shout. Hey, 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 I see you. Hey, hey. 
All right, tighten up. It's called, somebody say accountability. accountability. Yeah, that, that's how we become better brothers and sisters in Christ. When we can say, hey, tighten up. I ain't judging you, but tighten up. So, that's a little bit wrong. It's not the shame you know, like that. But, no, period. Moreover, that's what you just said. Jesus said, you be ashamed of me before people, I'm going to be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. I, ain't, I want him to be proud. Hey, that's Centron. Yes, that is Centron. You know him. That is your son. Yeah, yeah. So say your name. Say it again. Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Uh, what did God do for you today? I give my life back to God. Now this is when y'all start losing it. Start giving my glory. Yeah. Yeah.
that his power is being manifested in such a way that you ain't got to have nobody lay hands on you. All you have to do is lift your hands and receive. All you got to do is lift your hands and receive. His presence is here. His power is here. And the more that you release, the more that you let go, is the more that he'll give. The more that you release, the more that you release is the more that he'll give. But you have to release. Hallelujah. His presence is here. Thank you, Jesus, for visiting us. Thank you, God, for your presence.